So, in 1949, the United Nations charged a consortium of renowned scientists with studying the race problem. In 1950, those experts reached a general agreement that the idea of race is a biological myth, declaring mankind is one. All men belong to the same species, homo sapiens. So I was born like 25 years later, and I can tell you throughout my childhood and youth, it was like not a soul in America got the memo. <laughs> By the time I was playing bitty basketball, the outcomes of my blackness may as well have been cheers, making sure that I knew or felt that a black baby was five times more likely to be born out of wedlock than a white one that years later I was six times more likely to go to prison than a grown white baby. That my mama, my mama was what the elephants called a welfare queen. And if I was murdered, there'd be a 93% chance it'd be by someone black. Look, I know we just met and all, but I wanna share something with you that uh, I'm both ashamed and proud of. I used to be a drug dealer. And there were times in that life I thought, oh my God, this guy is gonna kill me. The time that scared me the most, I was selling some dope to this dude named Rob. I hopped in his car, I handed him the dope. He handed me a sack, but the sack felt light. So I reached in hoping for thousands and instead got Monopoly money and tissue. I was like, what? Is this some kind of joke? Then a guy sprang up from the back seat and choked me and smashed a gun to the side of my head. Don't say one word, he said. So Rob pulled off, driving all calm, while I'm begging him to let me go, and every so often a guy with the gun smacked me upside my head and threatened to kill me. I recognized the voice of the gunman as that of an old high school classmate. Yeah, we went to school together, and his name was Stitches. Rob, Stitches, and me are defined as black, which means if it had made the paper or the news, which it didn't, it could have been classified as yet another instance of black-on-black -black crime. And that fact is crucial to what I came to discuss, what I believe is the most important element of black-on-black -black crime, blackness. Before I get to blackness, though, I really want to rap to you about whiteness for a second. That whiteness, as many historians, scholars, and philosophers have argued, is an invention of the Europeans who colonized what became the USA, and secured by methods including propagandizing ideas like that vague concept of phenotype, as well as by laws, policy, terror, and death. That whiteness, as my hero James Baldwin argued, has been absolutely a moral choice. So I got another question for you. This one's a little more serious though. If you could choose to abolish white power and white privilege and white supremacy, would you do it? Now what if I ask if you'd also banish blackness? While white people were inventing themselves, they also were forging blackness by means that included propagandizing ideas like that vague concept of phenotype, as well as by laws, policy, terror, and death. Any of that sound familiar? You're right. Both blackness and whiteness come from the same place, the deep need to debase, exploit, and oppress groups of humans. So call me crazy, but I propose to address the crux of America's race problem at large to address in specific the troubling product of race known as black on black crime, we must void the ideas of whiteness and blackness. I mean, how can we call for the death of whiteness and let live the greatest creation of a people who believe themselves white? A people who believe themselves black. Yeah, there's much talk now of uh, securing a black body and there are many, me included, proclaiming Black Lives Matter. 
There have been movements of black pride and black power. There have been mantras of, ooh, black is beautiful and too black too strong. And though all of them are meant to empower and they have done so, they all are also rooted in an identity meant to subjugate and dehumanize the group I call my people. Colored, Negro, Black, African American. Look, this is not me trying to revive the ages old argument for my people to receive a new label. Nah. Nor am I ever trying to distance myself from them. Look, I don't know how y'all do out here, but I'm down for my folks like faux flat tires. Nor would I ever try to knock the necessity known as black culture. But what I am saying is this. By claiming blackness as who we are, we've been coerced into complicity, into reminding those who believe themselves white of their privilege and perceive higher status. We must revolutionize the idea of blackness. And in this case, the most revolutionary thing we can do, that I can do, is refuse it as a racial category and an idea. So I can just hear the naysayers. You know, so uh, what's this new America going to look like, Mitch? Uh, what's going to be the bedrock of these new identities? To keep it all the way real with y'all? I don't know. But I'm happy, happy to assist how I can in the search for answers. If this sounds to you all like a Q&A in an Africana studies class, guess what? It's because it so often is. The first time I heard anyone deconstruct the idea of whiteness, I was at New York University. This was like 2002. And to give you a little perspective on it, for that privilege, I was paying tuition that equaled near twice what my mother has earned in any year of her working life. To give you a little more context, I'd already justified being a womanizer many times over. I'd had my baby girl out of wedlock. I'd been to prison, and I read I'd been to prison, and more than once gave serious thought, I'm talking deep contemplation, to whether I could or should murder someone as payback. Now, I am not attributing those decisions to my blackness, but I'd like to believe if I'd been given the tools to critique blackness and whiteness in some of the ways I do now, I would have made wiser choices. I know one thing, it would have been damn tough to make worse ones. <sighs> so, uh, this ain't sense. Um, armed with what I know now, I can't help but wonder what role internalized blackness played in what Stitches did to me and what he did to his former homeboys. I can't help but wonder what would have happened if when I came face to face with someone who'd wandered up to me in the middle of the night to buy crack, or when Stitches looked across at the men he killed, instead of us seeing a colored or a Negro or a black man or woman or an African American or even an American, we have been given the chance to perceive even a chance to perceive what those long ago inventors of blackness and whiteness never ever wanted us to see a fellow human being. Thank you.